hello everyone. Um, viewers of Davidson TV, I'd like to greet you. My name is Wendy Skosana uh, from Davidson, um, founder and chairperson of Rudo Institute. And I'm just like Rudo just to have a chat about the pandemic. So, a few months ago, I mean, it rocked everyone. I mean, when you start a business, you have hopes and dreams for a year and how you want to perform. The certain proposals that you put in place, the certain partners that you want to engage with in business. And then when a, a situation rocks, not just you, the business that you're in, or the people that you partner up with, but the whole world in its entirety, uh, it makes you question how your business is going to be aligned and also work towards the future that you want to experience. So, I mean, we didn't experience anything of this sort in the last, I think, seven years of us being in business. In South Africa, this is the first time we have a state of emergency since the democratic state. So you ask yourself, Guti, how was the government or was the government ready for this particular thing? But beyond that, how then are you as an individual entrepreneur responsible for so many things and so many moving parts preparing for such things? So we weren't prepared. Um, we had a person that uh, worked with us uh, that we couldn't retain because of this particular thing. And also with this pandemic, we had certain events that we were supposed to do. Those events were supposed to yield a certain amount of money so we can continue the operations that we want to do because we believe in making money and taking that money and reinvesting in, so, in societies that need it the most so that we can build our track. But also in building our track, we can enable societies to grow at the same level with us. Because really our idea is to have a university of our own. But that university have plus minus 5,000 people that go into that university. So you cannot do that when society and communities aren't ready for a university. So that's the reasoning behind making money and reinvesting in society. Societies get better so that when you introduce yourself as a university, society is ready for that particular intervention. But so we find ourselves here, had a lockdown, and for the first few weeks of this pandemic, we couldn't open. So when you can't open and you're reliant on this particular business to bring food to the table, then it means the pandemic itself or the state of emergency or the measures therein have taken away bread from you. So then you ask yourselves, how are you going to survive? And not only in survival mode, money, but also the business is sort of like your identity. You've worked so hard to create this identity, this business, this brand. And when you look at it and thinking, yo, I don't have money to pay bills, I don't have money to satisfy the people that are all. I don't have money to continue operations. I mean, I just make one small example: uh, the printer. So if you if you don't print, ne, and you leave the printer for a specific time, then the ink itself uh, clogs up, and when it clogs up, the printer stops working. So you have to have either printing material, cartridges, or you need to continuously print for that not to not happen. So we couldn't do that. Firstly, we didn't have print. We didn't have printer, a, a cartridge. So we couldn't buy the cartridge anyway because the shops were closed. So we couldn't. I mean, there was an eventuality that we wouldn't have a printer by the end of this. And this is just a small example, just to show you of the disturbances that this whole thing has. And we had to ask ourselves, "Good soyan zaranjani." After this, luckily enough, there was interventions from the WHO and our government to say. Let's ease off your lockdown and have like stage four. Which the stage four were then because we operate as well as the ITC, we then were able to open up our business and offer services within the ICT. So communications, giving people the necessary information, registering for them for the particular things that they want to register in. We also continue with the business of helping people with NEFSAs and all those things. So at least that helped us to sort of like make sure that the machine is working, but still we're not breaking even. Or we're not doing half the things that we wanted to do. I mean, the events that I was talking about were cancelled. And when an event is cancelled, not postponed, it means there's a chance that it won't happen. So what's going to happen if we don't find a vaccine in the next three months, four months, five months? So it means we have to now innovatively think of our business. So I think also with the things that we do, it's very important for us to have an entrepreneurial mind that also is innovative in a way that you're able to tap into opportunities and things you can do to change the model of the business altogether because this shows us that at any given point the things that we value the most the things that we think are what makes business work can be taken away from you so if you aren't able to shift and manage the transitions that your businesses will take 
then we won't be able to be the business of the future. And that requires a change of mindset, that requires a capacity beyond um, what we thought, because now things are moving so quickly that the fourth industrial revolution, I mean in South Africa, we're still like a third world country. So we're only operating in the second world, uh, third world, some parts of the country. So now really things are gearing up. I mean, if online applications are the thing of today and everyone needs to be on online applications, it just tells you of how society is moving without us even realizing. So, so those are some of the effects that we had and also those are some of the effects that then showed themselves in the communities because people weren't ready, they didn't have the information. So now we have to go out and give the people information of how now the society is going to change because people want to lose jobs. 10 million people are unemployed in South Africa before the pandemic. So now you can only imagine with the pandemic how many people are going to be unemployed. People are moving into automation. Um, I mean, Skype calls, interviews, conferences are the thing of now like people aren't meeting on a day-to-day -day basis to have these conversations about business and so on. So if you don't have the equipment to render services beyond what you thought was the normal interactions, then you won't be able to tap into the opportunities that present themselves in the business fraternity. So I think as young people, as people in business, this is a time for us to change the way that we think of business, to change the way that we think of money, we need to save. Because if we had saved last year for such things, because we normally say, yeah, we have a, a, a contingency fund, yes, yes, but that only lasted us a month. And a month then turned into three months, four months. And if this continues for the next 10 months, what are we going to do to make sure that we service our debts and all these things that I talked about initially? Uh, for our businesses to be sustained. I mean, there's rent that needs to be paid, all these things. So when you don't have the things that are going to cushion you during hard times, then your business is going to fail, and that's the whole truth. So, in Tawanguti, I'm a conversation beyond, between our stakeholders and our stakeholders. So, we need to also understand what the government is here with the pandemic, and the communicator is communicating information. Be aware of fake news, always check your sources, recheck those sources as well. Make sure you watch the news, you engage in that information. But also think the private sector to now play a bigger role, especially in the country that we're in, where the, the private sector spends more money we economy it than the government and other parties. Then also interrogate what we call the informal sector. Which if you belong in an informal sector and it's said that, you know, in Gauteng it's worth one billion rand, how do we then engage in ways and means which is Songkis and Seven Sana to make sure that we we help each other cushion the problems that we face with. Because if we don't form a partnership, we work in silos. And the societies or communities that don't have the XSMA private sector or big organizations that operate within uh Lava Talakon, food parcels in time or near about toilet oil. But also, any vaccine. So, So, spend more time reading, getting informed also informing family members but also use this time to check on the people that matter to you the most so through phone or if now we make sure you build strong relationships with them but moreover if you have symptoms of flu and you need to or mix somewhere this is the opportune time for us to take a break from zokelism to is Kati away from Tina, which is not again. Which is not again. Because really, if I equal a vaccine, I equal a cure, you need this nine to cushion out the pressure that hospitals have. Because also there is bad here. And this is kindness knee, the CS bad here, which is total night. Man is some number corona, not low, not low. Chances are, who's a total cool of corona is bad here. Like Talin, the solar corona night, which is severe right. Because we are in Kumunda, so we are going to go to isolate, spend this party, we are going to go to the Because really, last time we were in the war, and we can't operate as if it's normal when we were at war. 
and we're at war with something that we can't touch, feel, or tell. Which we don't know, we don't know. We could be having this interview with you right now. And as we think now, right now. And in the next few weeks, also about to go and do new corona, and then maybe interaction now because we are trust. We are bang and sand. You shake my hand. We communicate. I'm swaggy mask. Right now. Listen, there's no end to go to cool. And maybe my immune system is being honed in here. Or maybe my nerves are not good. When I go about to not good, we end up dying of corona. And then, so when I'm a question, what's why? In in it's because you didn't take the information that's been granted to us to heart. So I think. Now is the time for us to really take care of ourselves, and by that, getting informed, taking care of the people that matter to us most, checking in because it's not just an emo, it's not just a, a, a spiritual thing that we are fighting against. It's not just an, an economical thing that we're fighting against. It's also an emotional thing, because the happier you are, the more you know zeal you have to take on life as it is. Because if you know, people would be dying of depression if they don't take care of their emotions and so on. So I think this is an opportune time for us to take care of the things that matter to us the most.